Hello, hello. Welcome to Today at Dunamis. It is so good to see y'all again. And once again, hello to you, Sean. Hello, Sean. Thank you. I like the way you try to say the Texas y'all. 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 How y'all doing? Oh, y'all. That's my favorite one. It's because you wear that American baseball cap for the second week in a yeah. row. Yeah. You must like that one. Base pro shop. Yes. Ah, I made that joke last week. Oh, no. Bass. 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 Yeah. <laughs> he reminds me of a bass. They call it a wide, Sean, who are you looking wide at? mouth what are you doing? bass fish. What are you doing? I'm looking I'm at here. myself. Oh, I'm you're looking at yourself. Yeah, oh, yeah. All right. So, the feedback camera. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. That's <laughs> so it is good to be back together again it today. It is good. Three weeks. On Thursday, the 22nd of February. Yeah. Have we set a record on how many we back-to-backs we've done? I think we have. This is the best we've done in a very long time. I, I think. think it's the best we've done in 2024. It is. We haven't even done that many episodes in 2024. It's a joke. Oh, Good okay, job, Sean. We'll that was very funny. Yes, very good. Too much in the morning for you. But it's good to have you back with us. We are blessed to have you, and we want to hear from you and share, would you, share our program, which is great. Smash like. So lots of things happening around the place. There was a prediction I gave two weeks ago. Yes, there was, Sean. Mm, yes. A prediction. There is. I was having a little rant. Yeah, a little, oh, just a little tiny rant. A little rant. Went for maybe over 10 minutes, mm. I think. Mm. Uh, a little and unexpected. We are talking about that horrific stabbing of a grandmother. Yes. And uh, I went from everything from the politicians to the magistrates. But it was a big shock to you when I went to the point also of the police commissioner and saying that it was unacceptable with the behavior of the police commissioner. Mm, yeah. And it had nothing to do uh, with me being misogynist yeah, yeah, because yeah. I'm not a misogynist and it's mm. got nothing to do with be, her being a feminine but has to do with the fact that I didn't think that she was representing the police mm. when she is not put there by the police force, she's put there by the Premier's office, Yes, that she needed to go and confront Parliament for changes to mm. let the police know they're fighting for her. Well, you looked at me weird, perhaps others did too, but mm. here we are a couple of weeks later, she's resigned. Yeah, well, well we've, we've got... We've got the clip of what, what you actually said on the podcast two weeks ago. And I, I, I have to say, I guess you kind of predicted it. So should we play it? Yeah, go ahead. All right, here we go. I also believe, to be honest with you, that the head of the police needs to go. And for the simple reason, it's not that these things happening are directly her fault, but they are her fault that she's not pushing hard enough yes. she's not in the public face so we got the police union who's out there pushing it that it's not right what's happening and that the courts be and that the police head is not doing anything for us and there has to be they're just scared about their contract of the way so i feel like heads need to roll yeah we need to get rid of this government mm. the head of the police needs to go wow yeah yeah you called it you called it sean and now now she's gone i didn't know i was that direct <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're pretty uh, stern. You're pretty passionate after the whole. Yeah. Well, that you know, granny getting stabbed. That's pretty. Well, pretty yeah, I, I, I was upset. Yeah, and, what I, and I'm still upset. There was a case just on the news last night in mm. Daisy Hill. Did you hear that one? No, no. Well, no. there was a husband and wife. Imagine about my age. Yes, and they're at home. Oh my goodness! And uh, three young people mm -hmm. with large knives smashed through the door oh my goodness held the knife under the neck of the gentleman said i will kill you oh my goodness and he just said what do you want and took the wallet the keys they stayed in it down there they ransacked the house and ran out oh man and then the guy quickly said that was on the news last night so wow. we still have a situation so but in the in the meantime anyhow and the other prediction i said too <clears throat> not quite the same mm. is i'm sick and tired of hearing this statement the jails are too full mm. What we need to do is send them off to what I call workstations. Yes. And I mentioned, for example, if they send them out to central Queensland to our cattle stations or sheep stations, mm -hmm. get them Farms. to live in the barracks and works or go for the farm picking and doing things, um, don't pay them, don't remunerate them, but use the money that I'd get to have the security there. I mean, put a uh, what do you ankle, call those? Brace, ankle bracelet, bracelet on them. Yeah. Where are they going to run to? Yeah. But again, I don't think they should be forced to go. Yeah. It should be an incentive. Yes. Like if you decide to go to do this, then that's rather than you being incarcerated. Yeah. I also think three strikes, you're out. Yeah. None of this after three, you should be able to go in. I don't mean forever, but yeah. what I mean, no more parole. Mm, mm. And the only way it's going to happen, magistrates won't do it. It has to be a parliamentary law. Yeah, yeah. It has exactly. to come to parliament to come in. And so the police know they're 
But right now, there's so much things in the air. And then I did read in the paper now that they're saying that they're trying to do these, they're not the workstations, but they are a sort of similar thing mm. out inland from inland. Townsville and Cairns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which I think is a good thing. But yeah. let them work. Yeah, exactly. Let them learn a trade. Yeah. Let them go to a, a cattle station. Yes. And there's some, some of the best jackaroos we have yeah. of First Nations. Yeah, yeah. And let them go out there. I mean, they're not going to take, I mean, they're not going to, of course, we don't want them beat up and we don't want them mistreated. Yeah. Of course not. Yeah, yeah. Of course not. But we want them to work yeah, well, and, and feel some sort of worth in themselves. Mm, That's mm. another thing that's coming out. There yeah. are solutions. And also, if they're 18, yes. work out with a defence force that they mm. can go into the defence. Yep. They can do a, They used to do a, a thing, a cadet thing, that was 12 months. They used to finish high school at 17, mm. and they could do 12 months in the army, because I know some people who did it. They yep. never went on further, but there's a 12 months. After 12 months, they could stay or go. We had that running several years ago. Yeah. Give them a choice again. Okay, you got a three-year sentence, but if you agree to do one year in the armed forces, uh, that'll be how it goes in the area and then decide. They might learn something and want to go on. I mean, there are incentives we can do that gets them out of the community. Yes. Okay, gets them out of the community where the danger is. They've got to break that circle, that cycle. Yes, yeah, I you know, yeah. And get them out of there and do it. So there are things which are humane. Again, I don't think they should be forced. Yeah, yeah. It should be, here yes. is, you ever watch the story, there's a good a film, it's on George Foreman. Yeah. And he was arrested delinquent. This is a true story back in the 60s. And that's that they had a, it was national service. It wasn't the army, but they would serve in the areas of helping things in the land. Yeah, yeah. And they had to do a couple of years. And he chose that, and that's where he learned how to box. Ah. And so the whole idea is find areas that can help these people out because yeah. we need to do things that are positive. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. Well, let's introduce our guest. Oh, we have a guest. We have a guest, everyone. We have a guest. Be our guest. Be Okay, we all got that. Now. Okay. <laughs> so it is great to have. Our awesome, our wonderful, our phenomenal. Any other word you want to use? No, nah, he's all right. Okay, he's all right. <laughs> You've passed, huh? Yes. Jake O'Brien. Woo! Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, it's good to Jake. be here. Wow. Welcome. You've, Welcome brought, to Ed. you've brought fans with you. <laughs> yeah, you did. I don't get that. <laughs> yeah, okay. you don't get that, Sean. Yeah, so uh, nice to have you. I said to Ed, I made it to the big dogs. The big dogs. Yeah, league. he's yes. made the it. The big leagues. You're talking about me or Ed? Oh! Okay, yeah, come oh. <laughs> Who lit the. If you were a dog, what would it be, uh, Ed? I would be uh, Snoopy. A beagle. Yeah, that. Oh, dude, I had beagles. You don't like them? They're dumb. Oh. I mean, run, they run off. Of, that's kind of me. After a smell. Yeah. They run off the smell. I don't think you're in that area. That's a, you look more like a Labrador <laughs> or Golden Retriever. <laughs> I think I'd be a Chihuahua. <laughs> no way you'd be a Chihuahua, Sean. What the or, heck? Or a pug. <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll leave it there okay so the fact of the matter is it's nice to have you with us yes and on that one your phone's ringing okay yes. so thank you for keeping it on quiet all right yeah. so uh comes in well Sean, i think i think we have a clip to play well look this is what we want to do yeah. is we like to give our input about yes. what might work because you got a youth camp coming up yeah 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 so ed and i gave us saying we think that we have an ad thing that would work for your youth if you're open. Yeah. Are you open? Yeah. Okay, Let's we'll go. watch the monitor. Go. go ahead. All right, here we go. Here yeah, we go. Here you go for the youth camp. <laughs> Doing this for oh. the Lord. I ain't getting bored. I ain't getting bored. Doing oh. this for the Lord. I don't really get Who's that? Like I ain't getting bored. <laughs> Doing this until I go saw one day. And I'm very sure I hit the call Ooh. one day. Wow. Look at this, man. That's you, brother. It's nostalgia. Not a bad voice there, buddy. <laughs> Alright, Ed, you embarrassed him right. enough. Okay, Ed will just keep it going. It's on. Well, it's on Ed's top hits on his. Uh, thing. Well, oi, you know what, Jake? When you did the the youth news as a rap, yeah. that was so impressive do like you have really? that one huh do you have that one that's what that's that's this clip oh. it's one of him just, just i rapping. couldn't understand the words <laughs> <laughs> but um it, it was very impressive like you just rapping like very well written very well written i remember when we were filming this i was like oh this is so cool has your lovely wife seen that no, I don't think so. Oh, she's probably can... watching now, so <laughs> she's probably just seen it. 
Uh, we got Lacey last week riding a horse, and yep. this week yeah, we got, got you. Me rapping, okay. And uh, if we get you dead on next week, I have to find oh, spoil, no spoilers. No yeah, spoilers. So I got a picture. I, I got a picture. I got yeah. a picture. That's good. How did it make you feel going back then? Oh man, it's uh, it's a throwback. That's for sure. Do you still do rap? Hey, no, 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 no more, no more of that. <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> no, no more of that stuff. No way. So, no. Uh, do you ever get rap singers in the youth or anything like that? We did get a rapper. Yeah. Do you call yeah. them singers or just rappers? I think just guest call rapper, or artist, yeah. guest artist. Yeah, guest artist. Okay. Like that, yeah. Do you ever get them in? Yeah, we got yeah. a we got a young guy. He came. Uh, he's really cool. Chetty, Chetty, Chetty? Yeah, little Chetty? Filipino guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he's and really cool. Did you want to get up and? No, 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 no. <laughs> I let him do that. <laughs> I let him do all that. No way. I wouldn't do that. Well, maybe the youth after seeing that, they might wonder. Yeah. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> well, your secret's safe with us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> not. It's not like it's on the okay. internet. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> well, just so I'll be his bodybuilding times. Yeah, I yeah, told yeah. you, son, not to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I told you he'll come back and bite you. Yeah, that's You know it. what I mean? So uh, he'll come again. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed, Dad. You will be when your son and daughter get it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> when they're like 20 years old, yes. <laughs> If, youth camp, you. if we get 20 youth camp registrations by the end of today, yeah. Jake will rap at youth camp. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> right. Does that include sponsorships? You might have to rethink that one. <laughs> Maybe. <Yeah. laughs> All right, 50. 50. We'll okay. go higher. Oh, 50 registrations. There you go. <laughs> oh, so how is the youth for today? Very good. Very good. Meaning the youth ministry at the moment, yeah. No, not your ministry. How are the youth? I mean, we hear about all the youth. Yeah, crime. the youth crime. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's how are the youth? What's it like out there with youth? Is that is it a good picture? Like, is the youth crime reflective of the youth today, or or is that just an extreme group? Like, what what is it? Because the youth crime is not one nation. It's not First nah, Nations. Yeah, it's not African. Yeah, it's everyone. It's not yeah. Caucasian. It's all of them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I see white guys. Yep. I see First Nations yep. up North Townsville. Yep. I see yep. uh, uh, those of African descent. Yeah. There's not yeah. one color or one yeah. group. It's just, what yeah. is it with that 16, 17 year olds? It's it's such an identity crisis at the moment. Oh, good especially word. Especially with um, the, you have the, obviously the sexual identity as well, which is a whole nother subject. But I think definitely with the, the youth crime, they're trying to find their identity in something. So what the only thing they can do is is try to get attention by committing these crimes or trying to fit in with their other friends and all this sort of stuff. They the the music industry with the whole all that sort of stuff. They're trying to fit in. They see how uh, maybe an influencer or something on Instagram or whether it be Facebook or in, on the internet, and they want to be like that person. Mm. So what they do, they try to imitate that, and that's how they try and find their identity. Do you mm. think that this sort of a uh I'm going to use the word gangster style yeah. breaking the houses yep. is reflected of a culture or music. Definitely. Definitely. So which particular one is it? I rock and roll? It can't be rock and roll. No, nah, I think so it's the hip hop, hip hop, hip hop culture. Definitely. Um, especially in amongst the young, the young guy males who, um, they look up to these music influences and these artists, um, won't say any of them but there's different artists especially in australia this whole new scene of australian hip-hop has come through and it's they come from the housing commission and they come from these areas and so other young men who come from these areas they see how these guys what these guys went through and it's all publicized you know mm -hmm. the crimes that they've been a part of so they're mm -hmm. rocking up to their the courthouse and they're doing music videos in front of the courthouse oh they're doing all music this, videos yeah, the yeah all this sort of stuff so um it's influencing these young males and then what it translates to is them committing these crimes. And yeah, it's, it's really sad. Have you yeah. actually met any young person yeah. who has yeah. been involved in such crimes? We, I was at, um, I go to Springwood state high school mm. every Wednesday morning for a breakfast club. Not as a student. Not as a student. No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I go there to do, um, just to hang out with Chapel. them. Yeah. yeah. We just play cards and do all these sort of fun stuff and they have breakfast, all that mm. stuff. Um, and uh, these young guys, they openly talk about it. They openly talk about what they're doing on Friday night. Um, and I can try and get them to try to get them to youth as well. But they, you know, t openly talking about, you know, which car they're going to steal on oh the weekend. And, and oh, are you coming? Are you coming along? Uh, are you going to come join us? Some of them will be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. You know what I mean? And then they try to peer pressure them. And so we try and have that point where we can try and influence that. But yeah, they're very open with it. Very open. In my personal opinion, and again, it's only my opinion. <clears throat> it won't be too long before one or two of these young fellas will get killed yeah. mm. in a home invasion. Yeah, mm. yeah. Because right now they've been fortunate 
that either no one's there or they'll be in the back room yeah. or like this other guy, Desi Hill, gave in. Yeah. But eventually yeah. they will pick a home mm. where there will be resistance. Definitely. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. And blood. And I wonder what happens. Mm. I know what happens in Texas. <laughs> yeah. The owner of the home is okay. Yeah, stand your ground yeah. laws. Yeah. But let's say someone broke into the home. They have their knife. The owner resists and with that knife kills that young oh, person. Yeah. This is a struggle. Yeah. They kill them. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. They're dead. What happens then? Well, first mm. of all, the parents of the kids will probably say, my baby's innocent. Yeah, definitely. Mm. The mm. second thing is the police charge that homeowner yeah. with manslaughter. Mm. Yeah. Even though it was not their weapon, mm. it was the other person's weapon or defending the house. Mm. Mm. So I just honestly believe it won't be that far away before it, if the police don't, yeah. it, it will get to that Act place. That, yeah. And that's what I'm most fearful of. Yeah. Now, we've had a couple of deaths. We had that mother a couple of years back. Yeah. She resisted and they stabbed her. Then we had this grandmother who was killed. Yeah. Mm, but yeah. eventually we're going to have the perpetrators. Yeah. Someone's going to get killed because yeah. someone's going to say it's not on. Yeah. Yeah. And look out if they have a gun. Oh which I'm not saying they should have. I'm, yeah. I'm not talking yeah. about the perpetrator. Yeah. I'm talking about the homeowner. Homeowner, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because the more the homeowner gets fearful, yes, the more they're open to have a weapon, yeah, which they shouldn't have. Up their security, yeah. yeah. Because they yeah. feel they need it, and yeah. it's going to cause it. Because the police will charge them in the courts, yeah. but the community mm. will go crazy in defense of them. Yeah, mm. yeah. And I can tell you, it, it'll be... Uh, and then if that particular person who dies is from some sort of ethnicity yeah you might get that group one in retaliation yeah. so i can see a lot of things yep mm. yep definitely uh, coming about so this yeah. is what really worries me and concerns yeah. me you know as a citizen as yeah. a pastor yeah as a man that you yeah. know these things here so it, it is a real shame uh, in the community definitely. and the area yeah so you are trying to reach out to certain people involved in that area. Yeah, definitely. How hard is it breaking that culture? It's is hard. it an adrenaline rush? Is it a? Is it just because of the music? And like, what? Yeah. How do you break in that culture? It's Come hard. to you if we play cards. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean. Exactly. We have a versus going out from the yeah. adrenaline rush. I mean, how yeah. do we combat that? Yeah, I think our biggest thing has been sports. Mm. So trying to, uh, pretty much every Friday night, that whole grass paddock down there near the basement yeah. is just. They just play sports all the time, mm. yeah. especially the boys. And um, <laughs> that's all they do, you know what I mean? And they find that maybe it's an adrenaline rush in the sport. You know, mm. they get to let it out in sport um, and they get to feel part of it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's hard to break into it, especially when ethnic, uh, ethnicity is involved yeah. Yeah. and um, and culture and all these sort of things. It, when that's involved, it's hard to break in. But all you can do is just love on them and, and be there for them. And, that that um, is a problem, the ethnic groups. Definitely. So yeah. I remember when Josiah played soccer in the Christian League. You know, he was for Springwood at that point. You know. yeah. Then we went to play a group in Dutton Park, and that is called themselves El Salvador. Oh, wow. my goodness. And so you weren't playing against kids living in Dutton Park. Mm. You are playing against an ethnic group. Mm. Now, wow. as far as I understand the soccer, they stopped you naming it after a nation and yeah, in those yeah. areas. But the thing is, is that if you get the groups in, they get caught in that sort of situation. Look, yeah. I, I love our New Zealand, Polynesian cultures in our country. It's great. But I've never liked the haka mm. because, and I know I've offended people and I apologize, but just that its whole heritage seems to be that I've seen demonstrated to be warrior warlike, like mm. I'm going to get you and whatever else. And I've, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, I'm not saying the hacker itself and sports cause trouble, but I'm saying if they're carrying that self thing in the community, in the groups, everything else, it gets difficult. Now, I don't know if you know the origins of sports and athletics, how it came about, but the whole origins going back thousands of years of sports, the Greeks and everything else, mm. and you go to the Aztecs, the Aztecs in the time mm. there, came about to stop villages warring. So in order to stop them warring and killing, they did sports. Oh. To compete, bring out your best, bring in our best, and we do the sports. Wow. So the whole idea of sports was to bring your best against your best mm. without killing whole villages, killing. and that was mm. the whole origins yeah, of wow. the sports. So when you mentioned sports, yeah, its origins goes all the way back wow. thousands of years, yeah, back to that very area. So yeah. you know, it's it's a real big concern and a real big yeah, need in our definitely. society, 
And yeah. and I also think too, because they're also showing, I was watching a program that a lot of these crime groups are into brands. Oh, like I saw one crime yeah. crime group there, young man, having these Gucci bags and everything yeah, else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, like really big <laughs> yeah, into brands. Yeah. 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 I've sportswear. never seen a time. I was never into any brands oh you didn't yeah. have any you know, nikes or anything like that shown growing up nike like, didn't exist buddy oh yeah so oh, yeah you're really old yeah we had uh, adidas <laughs> or adidas depending on you want to call it yeah, yeah. it was a german group yeah but that was too expensive i couldn't afford that uh -huh. so i had what we call and i got the photo over there we call them gym boots <laughs> yes the canvas ones uh -huh. well i only found out in the 90s so i'm talking about 60s 70s yeah i only found in the 90s that gym boots were actually um that canvas American shoe, basketball oh, uh, shoe, what do you call it? Converse? Converse. Oh, yeah. Converse. Yeah. And we used to pull the plastic heel thing off because we thought it was terrible <laughs> and just have it as an area, which is the brand. Wow. I mean, you probably think that was sinful. But I got pictures of me in high school wearing the, those, hey, we called them wow. gym boots because we wore them in the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in those days when I played rugby league, yep. there were full boots of your ankle. Oh, oh wow. Dang. And soccer was the shoes yeah yeah so we wore boots so oh. rugby league was boots yeah yeah. Mm. so <laughs> wow. rugby league, so there's gym boots was baseball yeah so yeah. The, but we didn't have any we were just out there having fun man yeah. Yeah, yeah, i yeah, probably yeah. were the most nerdiest uh, well we didn't wear shirts anyhow so we yeah. just <laughs> out there. i didn't wear shoes all through primary school wow oh, i mean i did is... once a week to go to church yeah, yeah. but all primary school summer winter whatever else is barefoot until i went to grade eight then i wore wow. shoes <laughs> Yeah, that's why I got a little bit wider feet. But I Ed mean, still uh, doesn't wear shoes. Hey, hey look <laughs> at the, the bulb week head. What, Don't get there. Week one, man, I felt this terrible odor in here, smelt oh, it, oh, taste oh, it. Oh, and here I go, we go. dude, I mean, like, put those <laughs> shoes back on. He says, you're exaggerating. I said, dude, foot odor is not an exaggeration. It's <laughs> a choking matter. <laughs> oh, uh, have choking you ever experienced matter. him with his shoes off? Who, Ed? Yeah. Yeah, I used to be working in the office with yeah, him. Yeah, stink, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you know, you go like, Ed, are you here? Oh, how did you know? I said, I can I smell can you. Oh. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, uh, oh, my goodness. The most embarrassing thing I had with feet. Yeah? What's that? And is that um, I, was a, I wasn't even a youth pastor, but I was on youth staff. Yeah, yeah. So it must have been about 1983. Yep. And I was married, newly married. Yep. And uh, my senior pastor, Rich Klimanok, he had all the staff, there's about 20 of us, came down for like a two-day, you know, leadership training thing down the mm. Gold Coast when people had some apartments we bought and we were able to use the apartments. Was, yeah. I think it's called the Gemini of Burley Heads. Yeah. And uh, we went out mucking around. Because, you know, in the younger days, I'd wear shoes with no socks, you know, sports shoes. Mm -hmm. And the rule was you'd take your shoes off when you came in. Oh. Mm. There's like 20 of us warm in the area there. So I came in. And we're about 10 minutes in. <laughs> and the pastor's wife, Beth, she goes, What's that smell? <laughs> I go, I went in. I said, What's that stink? You know? Yeah. So it ended up it was my feet. Okay. Oh. It was the most humiliating thing. I had to leave the room, wash my feet <laughs> oh. and, it, and come back. It's very yeah. humiliating. Oh. So I got payback. Oh. Mm. So I got this we we're like twenty floors up. And I was able to get a friend of mine there it was called uh oh, chelsea's on watching chelsea you oh, gotta go wow. back to the beginning of me because we had a real good clip there of your husband <laughs> <laughs> go no. back and move forward chelsea it's worth <laughs> it and uh it's a little can and she brought it back to her she came from singapore <laughs> and uh when you turned it upside down it went oh wow That's, have you ever seen one of those <laughs> no because yeah, you're a different day and you turn it upside down <laughs> and go <laughs> really good yeah so i brought it up so we're 20 stories high right and I'm just waiting, the past is teaching. Like, <laughs> and you know, you do that pregnant pause real quiet. And I got it in my pocket. It's a pregnant pause. And I turn up <laughs> and it goes, <laughs> and, and this goes by, no one says anything at first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So let it go for a little while. <laughs> because again, I turn up and goes, <laughs> and, and this one lady, her name was uh, Kath Wiley, the older lady. And she goes, did anyone hear that? <laughs> and they go, go what? She said, no, I'm serious. I says, she says, I can hear a cow. <laughs> they go, calf, we're 20 floors up and we're pearly heads. It doesn't happen. I'm sure I'll go, no, calf, don't be silly. So it all goes quiet. I'll leave it for like five minutes. 
because the pastor would teach for a long time. Yeah, um, yeah. And I went on. I turned it over my pocket. <laughs> she goes, I'm telling you, I can't hear a cow. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, we were bad. I did jokes like that. Yeah. <laughs> pastor Rodney was the boss of me. Yeah. Yeah. He used to give wow. me a hard time. So we used to take take it out on them on jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, there used to be a Bullens Line Park. Yeah. Down by Bean Lee. Yeah. There, there, Bullens Line Park. And he's really paying me out. So I said, I'm going to get him. Yeah. So um, I went to the receptionist, and the receptionist was a lady by the name of Kay Biggs. She's a lovely lady. And uh, I said, can you – and you used to – when you come in the office, that I did, you used to get um, a piece of paper saying such and such called for your call and back. Oh, you know yeah. I mean? yeah, you, yeah. They used to put in the details. So I said, would you write this in for me for Pastor Rod? She says, yeah, okay. So I was right. Uh, Pastor Rod, please call Mr. L-Y-O-N – urgently about their son and put the phone number well l-y-o-n okay and the, the phone number belonged to bullens lime park <laughs> but i spelt it l-y-o-n rather than l-i-o-n yeah urgent about my son so i was actually in the staff so i got her to come in during the staff meeting yeah so we're in the staff meeting i was in there sanders and the guy called dad mcclune was in there and, and somebody else so she comes he goes uh, yes he's there uh, she says, oh, Pastor Rod, um, got an urgent call for you from Mr. Lyon. wants you to ring up about the sun. It's very urgent. Okay. And well, Rodney loved official stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so he says, excuse me, staff, i got to call this. So he calls. <laughs> He's got the phone up. Yes. Uh, hello. And, of course, when they answer, they go, hello, Bullens Lane Park. But he doesn't listen to that, right? Yeah. He just goes, oh, yes, hello. Uh, i got an urgent call to talk to Mr. Lyon. <laughs> they said, Sir? said, yeah, I got an urgent call to talk to Mr. Lyon about their son. <laughs> so I said, uh, which Lyon? <laughs> you know? They said, Mr. Lyon about the son. They said, sir, he said, this is urgent. Please put me through. She said, sir, <laughs> this is Bullen's Lion Park. He goes, Sean. I don't know how they always knew it was me. You know? They always knew it was me. The other one I got him was called Mr. Green Tree, and I gave him the nursery number. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't do that stuff, okay? No, so, I yeah, won't do that. that so, okay. yeah, we used to have a lot of fun in those days, just mucking around. <laughs> so when we're talking about the youth crime, okay, uh, what I was mentioning, yeah, okay, you're a different generation to me. Yeah. Okay, so how yeah. old are you, son? Uh, 23. Now? Yeah. Or will we? Okay, good, because yeah. everybody just does these funny age things to me. No, no, no. I was talking to Hannah. I said, how old are you, Hannah? Yeah. She goes, uh, I will be. Oh, no, I think it's Lacey. She said, I will be 20. I said, are oh, you 20? No, I will be. I said, so you're 19, <laughs> but I will be 20. I said, you're 19, <laughs> okay? You're 19, <laughs> okay? I'm 61. Yeah. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I don't want to talk about 62. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, you're 23, okay? So yeah. we're double. So, Devin, I, I believe that they should find some sort of work for yeah. juveniles. Yeah. Now, I don't believe in making it forced. No. Because if it's forced, they're going to be slack on the job. Yeah, exactly. But if you say, I'm going to reduce your sentence. So you say, well, where are you going to put them? Well, if a lot of these kids take it up, it's going to take numbers down on these yeah. watch areas. Yeah. And they're off in the area, and especially if they go out, see, I know they talk about the same thing, but I think if they go out to a big cattle station, yeah, you know, out central Queensland, like yeah. where they're going to go? <laughs> they can't yeah. go anywhere. They can't go anywhere. There's nothing yeah. there. It's can't escape. Far, yeah. 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 Or a sheep station. Yeah. Now, teach them some of the ethics of the bush. Yeah. I mean, especially if they had some of our jackaroos or jillaroos, especially the First Nations guys, because they're yeah, incredible. Definitely. They work hard. Yeah. And I'm not saying make them slaves. Of course not. Yeah. But I'm also saying don't remunerate them. No. Mm. And let them have board and food yeah. and everything else. And yeah. let them do their time. And if there is money, let it go into the extra services to have protection or yeah. whatever else. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that let's put them, give them the choice to go out there and work. Yeah. Mm. Because yeah. if they can find work, they might find a bit of dignity. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or offer them the armed forces, a cadetship yeah. or something yeah. else. Bring that in there. Like yeah. send them to the training areas or camps, even yeah. if they're 16. Yeah. Create a program at one of the army barracks areas yeah. and let them do a, a year program of yeah. training and stuff like that and, yeah. and put them out doing some works, yeah. you know, yeah. which, which I think would be great. Like when yeah. you have storms. Let yeah. them go there and work. Yeah, do the mud cleanup. Do the other yeah. thing here, like like have an area where they volunteer. And and it's not like this hasn't been done before. This was done in the fifties and the sixties in America. Mm, wow. Mm. And there's great stories of people that came through, like George Foreman and others. So there are great things that can be done. Yeah. 
And for the amount of money it costs us to have someone incarcerated, which is thousands of dollars a day, yeah. yep. it could come out a whole lot better. Yeah, and definitely. they might leave with a bit more dignity yeah. than they had. Because if they're on that workstation working there, <clears throat> I mean, they might be resistant, cocky, and everything else. And I'm not talking about mistreating anybody because I don't yeah. believe in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. got to be they choose to, it should yeah. be forced. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the same thing about giving. You should be a choice, not forced. Yeah. So the fact of man to get out there, and then when they get with these other guys, whatever term you want to use, Jack or Roos, Jill or Roos, you know, yeah. they might learn, say, hey, I like this trade, or I, I like yeah. working with the cattle. Exactly, yeah. And, mm -hmm. Or get them out fruit picking. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It gives them some sort of hope. Teach them how to work on those big turbines, you yeah. know, the, doing harvesting. Yeah. Because yeah. the farming needs it. Like, yeah. do something productive. Exactly. I know there'll be the green sort of people saying, well, they should be remunerated for the labor. No, they shouldn't. No. They should be paying back the community yeah, exactly. yeah. for what they've done. Paying mm. their debt, yeah. You know, and that's that's how it should be, paying back the community yeah. mm. and uh, helping out those farmers and everything else in the area. Yeah. But I, I think we could get it. You have a big dorm area built there. Yeah. Government yeah. can pay for that and coming yeah. out of what their wages are worth and get them working there. Yeah. yeah. That's so as a young man of twenty three yeah. yeah. and you hear an older man, sixty one, talking yeah. about that, does that insult you or do you see some? No, I see it? I see hope in it because um it for one, it eliminates the gang stuff. Because when they go to uh, these places, whether it be jails or whatever it is, the cor uh, correctional facilities, they um it, it forces them to sort of join a gang or yes. join this group that then they call themselves this or whatever it is where it eliminates that and it gets them working for one. It's like a double thing where yes, they're being, um, they have to work hard. So then it's, it's like a little bit of a punishment. So they got to work hard for what they did. And then secondly, it also gives them somewhere where maybe they could see themselves in the future, whether it be a work, a yep. trade or whatever it is. I think I agree. I definitely agree. I think it's a really good I idea. Mean, you might get 10% who might want to live out on the stations as a career. Yeah. Mm. I yeah. mean, even if it's 10%, it's 10% more than what they got. Exactly. Yeah. Who yeah. might want to contribute out there and say, hey, I like being a Jackaroo or I yeah. like being a Jillaroo or I, I like this sort of lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. They might like it because exactly. the cowboy or whatever word you want to use, yeah. they have a culture in themselves and they yeah. have an ethic code. That's true. Yeah. And uh, and so that could be something that breaks that other cycle. Now, yeah. I'm not saying all of them would. There'll yeah. be a majority, I think, will be like, I want to get out of here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there would be that 10%, yeah. I would say, at least, if not more, yeah. who say, you know what? Yeah. Is there a job for me? Yeah. Mm. And, and the station guy might say, yeah. you know what? You finish this time, we'll give you a paying job yeah. or apprenticeship, or we teach you how to ride, yeah. rope, whatever. The, I don't know what the words are, So because yeah. they use trail, but whatever they use. Yeah. But the fact yeah. of the matter is, or it could be uh, on the turbines and helping the farming and going around there. They could also shear sheep. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. But there's certain things there that is still the backbone of our country. Yeah. That could be worthwhile helping us and, you know, killing two birds with one stone. You know what I mean? But I, I just think there are basic things we can do. And I think, I don't think, the government doesn't think outside of its box. All yeah. we think about is incarcerate. Now, I'm not yeah. against, I believe that these troubled kids need to be off the street. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I also believe, and I said this last time, that if a parent is going to bail them out, it should be judged that that parent can actually do the job. Yeah. Yeah. Because too many parents say, well, I can't control Johnny or Bobby. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Then they shouldn't be going home to you on bail. Yeah. That's true. So they should be in a place to where, because there's a danger to others and themselves and make those people, parents pay for yeah. the, the area. So I just think, and, there's some things we could do very productive see the problem is is that there's been organizations christian organizations yeah. by name that have in the years gone by looked to do this but they have sexually abused them yeah yeah they have physically abused them yeah and they've left permanent scars yeah it's true mm -hmm. so this is why we pull away yeah so i'm saying Let's work towards established workstations yeah. rather than a Christian group saying, hey, I'm doing a group here for boys or girls here where yeah. it seems we've got problems. Let's go to established workstations where they're working yeah, that's and true. where it can be monitored and yeah. so they have the monitoring. But I think things could be done. Yeah, 100%. It's, it's got to be better than what we're going through. Yeah. Another question I want to talk to you about was all this transgender stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a real issue. I have an it older is. brother who's transgender. Wow. Or sister, whatever it yeah, is now. Yeah. I haven't talked to the person for quite a few years. Mm. Not my younger brother, Craig, but I'm talking older brother. Older, yeah. And is transgender. Mm. 
Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, and I, I, I said via his son, because he doesn't talk to me. Yeah. I said via his son, I'm happy to meet you. Mm. I don't have a problem. I'll meet you. Yeah. But I'm not going to come to your house because yeah. I don't want any of your outbursts. Yeah. And I'm not going to have you come to my house to be demonstrative yeah. in mm. front of my family. Yeah. But let's meet. Let's meet somewhere like a, a cafe or lunch or something else. Yeah. You can come dressed as Billy or Susie. It doesn't yeah. worry me. Do whatever mm. you want. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'll meet you. Yeah. I'll talk to you. Yeah. Uh, and I'll speak with you and I'll hear your story. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yeah. But what gets me is that, you know, it doesn't matter. But, you know, yeah. it's a difficult thing. But yeah. there's these cases right now. Like, I want to put a clip up. This just happened the other week. Yep. In America, it's a high school basketball team, girls' mm. team. We're going to mm. play it in a minute. Just hold for a minute yep. there, Edward. And uh, this just happened. It's high school, two girls' basketball team. Yeah. One school has a transgender male. Now, this transgender male says oh, is- trans female. Yeah, well, it's a male who identifies as a female. Yeah, it's a trans female. Yeah. And this particular person, okay, this particular person, okay, is bigger, muscular, and Stronger. even has some yeah. facial hair. So yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And this person in the first quarter eliminated one third of the school's team by injuring them. Mm. because of the brutality so yeah. this is a clip of when he steals the ball he's in the white off of the other school and she is so injured she should be taken off in this area it like <laughs> rips it out of her hands yeah wow. now you might think that's nothing the girl is actually injured yeah and she'll be done but because of the strength <laughs> that's a, that's the transgender versus that now i'm not judging the transgender because they need jesus like everybody else yeah, yeah. so the school you can see the injury the girl's in Right. Yeah, so pain. this there was three in the first quarter. Yeah. So the school ended up forfeiting the game because wow. they didn't have any more players. Yeah. Wow. Enough players. Yeah. Right. They limited, so they forfeited. Yeah. Now the school that got the injuries didn't say, "Hey, I'm forfeiting game because I know they knew there was a transgender player yeah. in that mm. team. They already knew it. Yeah. They said, "That's okay. We're not going to do it." But then when that transgender player came out if this is the right words I'm using, was so brutal and so much stronger, so much yeah. bigger, yeah. was so male. Yeah. The person just mowed them down. Yeah. 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 So much so that the girls, God bless them for their spirit for competitiveness, just got absolutely annihilated to where yeah. their engine taken off. Yeah. So the coach yeah. said, we forfeit. Yeah. 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 And uh, we just, we just can't, we got you're just injuring all our players. Yeah. One third of the team is off with injury. Wow. Mm. So how do you, as a youth pastor, because, <laughs> yeah. I mean, my brother, older brother, yeah. is, uh, what, 67, 68, well, 67, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, is into the transgender yeah. identity. Yeah. And under the Queensland government now has a license saying that, wow. change the name and the picture with a wig yeah. and all that sort of stuff here. And yeah. you don't do it. So that's their business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. But how do we handle it in that youth? How do we handle it yeah. in the school? Have you come across any? A lot. Yeah. You do come across. Yeah. We have, we have uh, one young man who, who comes to our youth. Yes. Um, and he, he. Just being careful what we say. Yeah. Yep. Being careful, but uh, identifies as feminine. Yeah. Um, uh, and so, for example, youth camp last year. Uh, obviously we have separate so male female dorms. so yeah dorms so yeah. males over here females over here um so a young guy a young man who uh, is coming to came to youth camp um he respects he knows you know uh, our views as a church mm. and also as uh, christians mm. and what um we believe and so he came forward to chelsea and i and he's like um you know as you know i struggle with this mm blah 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 um and so he didn't feel comfortable sleeping in the same dorms as other males yeah. so i said you can't sleep in the same dorms as females um and you can't sleep in the area at all and you can't use their toilets because you're mm. biologically you are a male mm. um and so he said he came up with the idea to get a tent and sleep in the male area but in a tent 
And I said that was totally fine. Um, because you I'm mean not gonna in the dorm or out of the dorm? Out of the dorm. Yeah, so yeah. just in front of yeah, the yeah, dorm pretty much. Yeah, on the yeah, grass. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he's the most boyish boy, like yeah. you know, you yeah, wouldn't yeah. even think. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, he stayed there like that and he had an encounter with God at the camp. Yeah. And he still struggles with areas, but he, he encountered God yeah. at, at youth camp. And so to see that and how, you know, they struggle with these things, mm. it's almost like it's a, a mental, mental, mentally yep. thing. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, that's how we sort of deal with this is that biologically you are a male or biologically you are a female. Um, and then we've also had a situation, a young girl who uh, used to come to our youth group, um, uh, identified as a animal, as and as so, an animal. Yeah, so as a furry. cat. Um, so calls it yeah, furry. That's yeah. right. That's what I had to ask. I had to ask a few youth what um what all these uh, terms were. Yep. Um, a furry. Yep. And so um, she identifies as a cat, and she changed her name to Felix. Um from another name um yeah well i know felix the cat comes back in my days but i couldn't yeah. believe kids today would be into yeah, that. yeah yeah so um and so she's she's working a few things and and she's doing amazing at the moment um which is amazing and so to see the growth in her um and there's a way out and that's jesus and to see mm. them come through and to realize that their identity doesn't need to be in anything else but god let me and, ask a question powerful. okay and yeah. i'm careful what i say Okay, I understand how you handle the transgender situation yeah. or, or, or curiosity. Yeah. And I think that was fantastic with yeah. the tent mm -hmm. and everything else. And I think it's great because it would have been tender on both sides. It's like yeah. respecting us, we're respecting you. Yeah. And here's the great thing is one of the biggest problems of church is what we call a forced counseling or a forced yeah. system of trying to force them out yeah. mm -hmm. by threatening blackmailing or whatever else. Whereas yeah. this way here, you said, you're welcome to be here. We'll look to accommodate you, but we can't give it. And, and there's yeah. a good thing. And then by their own pursuit of God, they found God. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's what's so beautiful there. Yeah. So in regards to this person that identifies, if the word is correct, furry. Yeah. What, like, does the person stay in the same gender dorms or do they want a separate yeah. thing? Do they, like, Yeah. I mean, like, what are they so they choose not I to. I mean, I know that yeah. there are outfits yeah. these people yeah. do because yeah. I've seen it yeah. through a program through Japan where yeah. they can spend 20 grand on some sort of a. Persona. Yeah, but they these outfits yeah, like a yeah. dog. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually yeah. thought this was a, it was a real border collie dog through the oh. picture, but it was actually a costume. Oh, wow. I mean, if I saw it in person, <laughs> probably I wouldn't, but just yeah, from the picture, yeah, you know. Picture. I mean? um, but just going back to the point, did the person want to wear furry. Yeah, Cat gear, Paints, uh, like a towel up the pants yeah, or tail, ears on the head or ears on the head. Um, I thought it was just a costume, like yeah, being just, cute. Uh, yeah, gothic sort of thing, or I yeah, don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah, being cute or whatever. Um, but then yeah, come to find out, it was an actual identity behind it, and um, yeah, yeah. So, is this person would they go to school like that? Yeah, I think they at school they go the same way. Um, and I'm pretty sure schools are accommodating it. Like, um, well, not private schools, not private schools, schools or other yeah, schools. Yeah, yeah but schools. they're um, quite open to it. Some schools, yeah, through the government and stuff. I, I'm not up to date on what the Queensland law is on furries. Yeah, I'm not sure. Either. No, I, I'm not saying that derogatively. Like, <laughs> no, I know true. they've changed yeah. even your birth certificate. You can change your birth certificate. Now yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. It's true. Yeah, which is I'm hoping when the LMP comes in. That they'll change those laws and yeah. all the licenses because it's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, they can't change their. Look, I heard one pastor was, is an open air thing, and these people transgender. And this yeah. transgender person says, you know, uh, I identify as being a female. Yeah. And the and they're really getting into this pastor's face, mm. and uh, then the pastor says, "Well, does that make you a female?" Mm. He goes, yeah, it's just what I identify as. Yeah. So then they said, well, if you identify as a cat, does it make you a cat? Mm. Well, the transgender person, you know, walked away. Yeah, like, left. Yeah. Meaning, if you say identify as a female and you're trying to look like a, to be, yeah. So does that mean because you identify as a cat that you're yeah. a cat? Like, yeah. like how far do we go? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I and mean, so what I'm saying is, if you identify as a cat, I'm just going to sound stupid, so I'll just say it anyhow. Yeah. 
instead of using the restroom, do you ask for a kitty tray? Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, did I did they do that? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, yeah. how do you handle uh, that area? Like, you know, I mean, this is. I know it sounds stupid. No, it's true. And uh, yeah. and I'm sure there's people who probably think the same thing but don't say anything. Yeah. But I mean, yeah. like, what wh- wh- what happens? Yeah. Do they want to come and sit on your lap to be a cat, or yeah. do they sit there? Well, like, like, okay, so if transgender is one thing, but this animal furry animal things, thing. yeah. Like, how far does this thing yeah. go? Yeah, it goes all the way. Like, uh, and we know that there's other sexual uh things that people do you know animal mm, th- stuff yeah. and i think it goes all the way well i know well. that yeah and then we also know the subject of bestiality which is still well that's yeah. illegal in this yeah. nation yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so there was people charging beast we won't go into what that means but yeah i mean it's one thing two people identify as an animal and yeah. do whatever yeah but it's and that is under the law seemingly okay yeah. Yeah. but in bestiality meaning identify as a, an animal yeah but you're not, and you yeah. want to have relations with an animal, yeah. which is not human. Yeah. That's illegal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So, you know, so th- there's just there's just some real bad things. You Terrible. Know what I mean? Now, I don't know enough about the furry, if that's the term. Yeah. I don't know if I want to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what I do find interesting that even in the youth ministry. Yeah. So when you go to uh, a youth conference. Yeah. I'm not always a big fan of some of these youth conferences. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's good reasons why. Yeah, absolutely. But I would hope that they have, if they're a fair income, a youth conference or youth leadership, they should have workshops that says, how do we handle transgenders? How do yeah. we handle yeah. furries, if that's yeah. a term? How do we handle youth suicide? How do we yeah. handle the youth gangs? Yeah. Do these things exist? Um, I think so. I don't know about workshops. If that you go that think deep. so, that means it's not so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So may I suggest that in your big group gatherings, yeah, okay, that maybe you should speak to leadership and say, hey, why don't you try and be a little bit smarter? Because yeah. I don't think they're real smart. Yeah. So why don't you try and be a little bit smarter and yeah. try and do some workshops to train not the kids who go in there, but to, for yeah. leaders, leaders, yeah, to say how do we? Ha-? So like, if you have one of these major groups, they should have a, a major national, yeah youth pastors conference yeah not the kids yeah and in that area you know you can do your rah 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 okay yeah but they should have workshops yeah saying how to handle transgender in your youth groups how to handle or i don't know if that's yeah. a word I, i'm only saying it not because i don't know what word to use yeah yeah, yeah. how do you handle the gangs yeah <clears throat> how do you reach out because i think that would be a real strong call more yeah. than all the rah rah hip yeah. hip hurrah whatever else they want yeah. to sing and do and rock yeah that would have more meaning yeah definitely. about how to practically work out that area yeah, definitely again this is sean's opinion which is not yeah. necessarily other's opinion which <laughs> obviously is not the opinion of the yeah. youth big conference things around yeah <laughs> which yeah. is why i probably don't like them so much but the fact of the matter is those things are more pre- i mean if i knew that was happening i'd pay and send you even if yeah, it's in yeah. canberra yeah, I'd say go up there, couple lose. I'll pay for everything, and yeah. go sit in some of these classes and, yeah. and 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 work out what they're saying, how to handle. Because to me, that comes back to the church. Mm, but yeah. just going at these things so you can hear some sort of band and then do a mosh pit and everything. I mean, I, I know <laughs> yeah, they yeah. love the thing, but to me, and then they go out to clubs afterwards, seemingly. Yeah. But the fact yeah. of the matter is that to me is more meaningful. Mm. By equipping, see, we've got this idea that everything's got to be. We have all this crowd together. Yeah, but really, what it should be is about equipping the saints. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. So I, I would find far more value. Let the youth groups do their rah 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 as they do, yeah. and try and do a national youth pastors leaders training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and get them to train on issues that is relative yeah. for them. Yeah, that's good. And I mm. would put money into that. Yeah, you know yeah. how to do train, how to relate. I mean. It could be the youth pastor, or you might get some of your other leaders as well. It could be six yeah. or seven, ten of you, but you go yeah. up there. So it's not all the rah, 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 but it's yeah. going to have far more effect when they come back to their local church yeah. about how to handle it. Yeah. So if you're dealing with a transgender, you're dealing with a furry, you're dealing with some kids in the gangs, yeah. okay, and you know part of the area has to do with the, a music certain area there in groups, yeah. that to me would be very, very powerful. Yeah. You know, in what to do yeah, in the definitely. areas. Have yeah. you ever thought of that? 
No, that's a good idea. I mean, wish I had that when I first started working with these. Maybe people. it's something you should look into doing yourself with Definitely. some other youth pastors to say, why don't do we do a, a youth pastors training yeah. Yeah. Friday, Saturday, a couple yeah. of days of school holidays, yeah. and then I can help out financially in other areas yeah. by bringing in some sort of specialized uh, Christian yeah counselors pastors yeah. who work in the areas yeah. because we don't want to go back to those bad old days where parents would force and i do mean bad old days mm. where parents would force their troubled children into what we call forced deliverance mm. right because it's brought yeah. a bad name for us yeah yeah it has to be knowing like i like what you said you did the tent thing anything else which wasn't yeah. necessarily your decision but theirs yeah. but there's respect there yeah but they knew that you cared about them yep. and there was that neutral ground, yeah. right? Yeah. So learning how to relate and so they, and then have it inviting because yeah. if you offend them, they're not as open to receive, but because you're able to work without compromising, yeah. Yeah. they were open to receive the spirit. Yeah. 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 And this is where as a church, and I'm, I'm a pastor, we've made our mistakes. Definitely. We want to force people to tithe. Exactly. Yeah. We yeah. shouldn't be forcing people to tithe. Mm. We should demonstrate how we live and do it, love people unconditionally, and then they feel that joy, they want to do it. Not being forced to where later on they get all angry. Yeah. But the same thing comes in every area. Yeah. It should be see see, like I get people who are living together. Mm. Now of course I know that's sin. But if I go straight to them and say, Listen, you're gonna hell because you're doing this area, but I try to take them through Bible study, yeah, which I do. Yeah. And then I'm praying that the Holy Ghost is gonna be because they're gonna this is I, this has happened to me hundreds of and when I say a hundred, I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. Hundreds. They'll say to me, Pastor, do you think it's right we're living together or having sex outside of marriage? Yeah. And I say, Well, what do you think? Yeah. And in every case they say, Well, you know, I, I, I feel uncomfortable. I said, Well, what do you think we should do? So they feel like they're initiating yeah. it, just like you do. Yeah. So they feel like they're initiating it. Yep. Sometimes it happens within two weeks, sometimes it takes five months. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But I walk with them believing that the see to me is God is a judge, right? Yep. Yep. The Holy Spirit convicts. Mm -hmm. Jesus died and loved. Yes. The Bible doesn't say to me, be like God. Mm. It doesn't say to me, be the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It says be like Christ. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And that's where I've got to learn to do that. And it is a transitioning time. Mm, mm. I don't agree with the food. Well, it was better in my day, those days. I believe the best day is today. Yes. Yeah. And the challenge of the day is a great challenge because challenges don't destroy us. Yeah. It's our inability to handle the challenges that yeah. destroys us. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So we learn to do it. But I mean, this is just my opinion, Jake. No, so that's good. I'm yeah. not saying I'm right. Well, in my opinion, I'm right, but I mean, I'm, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just teasing there. But the uh, fact of the matter is, is that it's just my opinion that we have a, yeah. a youth issue. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And uh, we have to, um, when I was the youth pastor many years ago, the youth group exploded. We yeah. had huge, we were at one point biggest youth group in Australia. Yeah. And um, we had a problem with gang. There, there are Christian kids who identified gangs. Yeah. And uh, they'd cause trouble and they'd come into the meeting to cause trouble. It was always the nighttime, it was the biggest meetings, and they'd yeah. come in there. And regrettably, in those days, I was used to push into being a pastor bouncer. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And there was conflicts in the car parks and oh, there yeah. was uh, all sorts of things <laughs> happening. And, yeah. you know, was, and police were called and knives yeah. came out. There's all sorts of wow. things happened. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was a difficult days. Yeah. You know what I mean? And trying how to handle it. And then you get yeah. parents coming in saying, how dare you treat my kid like this? I was like, well, do you know how your kid is? Yeah. Mm. Because I believe the problem's not your kid. The problem is you because you're yeah. not giving them the time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, that didn't win points even. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is, is that there, there's a lot of issues yeah. in the area. So it's, it's a, working with the youth can be the most gratifying area yeah and the most unthankful i worked with you for a decade yeah yeah and i thought they'd never forget me mm. the youth forget and move on faster yeah. than any group i know yeah true yeah. but when you're going they're the most emotionally yeah. and upset yeah they'll be the most emotionally pouring a yeah. one year later go yeah <laughs> who are you <laughs> 
Like they get over it faster. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But they express more emotion. Yeah. 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 And yeah. that comes in there. But no, we're excited. What's your vision for the youth this year? So your vision is um, we're believing for in miracles as in um, we, our title is Miracle in the Works. We're believing that um, these young people are able to go along with uh, Pastor Sean's vision of grow. We believe that they're able to grow in their faith, um, to see miracles happen around them and to notice miracles that are happening in their lives, um, whether it be at school, whether it be in their household, in their homes, with their family, um, to know that um, God is capable of making whatever is impossible for the world to become possible through Him. Um, and it's really just a, to a reliance on God and more of a reliance on Him. That's what we're trying to aim for this year um, at Youth. Yeah, look, I, I believe you 100%, and I believe that's the same theme message if back in the day when I was a youth pastor or a youth worker, yeah. was that we've got to instill in our young people purpose. Yeah. Mm. we got yeah. to instill meaning and value, yeah. but we also got to help them in the culture. I used to always say, uh, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, young people were taught at home how to be polite and have manners. Yeah. But I was saying this when I was a youth pastor, but when I was a youth pastor back in the 80s, yeah, you know, they might get saved, but they never had manners. No. <laughs> a lot of them did. No. So you're yeah. the teaching them manners, yeah, yeah. moral standards. Yeah. And uh, these are all the things that we, we deal with. So, yeah. yeah, it really comes in there. But, you know, we, we take our hat off to all youth leaders. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And uh, no matter what church, what group. Yeah. Now, I might take the bit of the mickey, and I, and I do actually mean how concerned I am some of these big youth rally things because yeah. I think they miss the picture of the church. Yeah. They should be working to equip the pastor to do his job, yeah. not try and be the big center of all of the groups. Yeah. This mm. is my opinion. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right, but yeah. it's my opinion. Yeah. They do far better equipping the pastors to go back and do their job. Yeah. And it's not happening. We need to be telling you, helping you pastors yeah. how to handle these different things. Yeah. Mm, definitely. How to do these areas. Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's my opinion. Yes. So that's something I'm going to hold to despite <laughs> what others might think. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Ed, do you have any closing thoughts for well, me, Well, sure, friend? I was going to say, before we head off, do we want to uh, talk about some certain shoes? <laughs> oh, shoes, Can we yes. talk about some shoes that uh, are currently, well, unavailable right now? <laughs> yeah, just see the shoes. Uh, our favorite um, our favorite American uh, president-elect, not elect. Let uh, me clarify this. Yes. He's not my favorite <laughs> American president. <laughs> <laughs> Most uh, entertaining. Let me just say this. Uh if I have a choice between Biden and Trump, I will go for Trump. Yeah, yeah. But if I had a choice between Trump and some other Republican, I would go the other yeah, one. Yeah, but yeah. I know it's not going to happen, so <laughs> I'll pick the there. And if, if, if Trump is a born-again Christian, yes. I want a refund. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. he yeah. is narcissistic. Yes. Yeah. Where Sex he is. thinks he is yeah. it and becomes very mean, if you're not. Yeah. And he's a misogynist in how he treats women. And I don't yep. care what any of my friends in America say, he's misogynistic in how yep. he has treat women. Yeah. And not just the ones in courts, but all the way across, he's a misogynistic. Yeah. Um, but again, when it comes down to it, I, I try to go for, and I got no voting there anyhow, yep. who's closest to my values. Yes. And that's where I go. So I would support support him mm -hmm. because he's the closest to my values but i'm not mm -hmm. saying he is your favorite someone that i want to <laughs> hang out with yes. okay yeah. but yeah. i do think he'll go do a stirring better because this present we they have over there right now Ugh. yeah well let's just say <laughs> it's wrong mm, yeah and this goes through the philosophy so yes. without being personal and disrespectful but he did these sh and did i do believe shoes. a lot of these court cases he's going through a g up setup yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a whole lot of yeah, i yeah. don't know anybody yeah. or business anywhere else who doesn't try to overvalue their property yeah yeah and then when you have a bank going there and say all the debts got paid yes. no one got hurt and we want to do business with him again yeah yeah and the judge rules who said before he even did the trial he was guilty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's something wrong. I think something you'll get wrong. off yeah, yeah, yeah. by the high court. But he did 1,000 shoes. Do you know about these shoes? No, I never knew about them. <laughs> he released them at the sneaker com. Oh, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sneaker, yeah. big sneaker com. Yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people booed, some people liked. Oh, wow. And um, <laughs> these were $400 USA because you yep. get tax. So wow. that would have to be about six, $700 oh, Australian. Yeah. 
say 700 something and gold <laughs> shoes american flag t trump and machination great and <laughs> i i wonder what sort of people would buy these shoes i mean like who yeah, on earth yeah. i mean seriously who would buy these shoes i yeah. got no idea oh hey who's this seriously <laughs> <Ed>? seriously <laughs> who's this guy wearing these Tony trump shoes <laughs> <laughs> seriously ed <laughs> If I'm going to do a brand, yes, uh, Charlie, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do it on a theme that I really love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right yeah. now I love being pops because, yeah. um, yeah. you know, my third grandson. So I would do my own shirt. If I could imagine my own shirt. Yeah, yeah. what do you guys reckon? It would be good. <laughs> pops, the man, the myth, the legend. Now, come on, brother. My hands don't look like that. I got good arms, all right? I don't have arms like that. I know, but, that's the scale. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me just say this. If my arms look like that, what would yours look like? Okay. Oh, they would be there. <laughs> the pops, the man, the myth, the legend. See, that's what I would market is the shirts. Maybe a little bit tighter fitting, okay, yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. come to the area there. It's been great being with you. Now, Ed, we finish off with a quote. Yes. Do you have a quote that you like? Yes, I can find a scripture, yes. Okay, then do you want to find it? Yep, I got one. Do you want to go first? Yeah, I can go first. Okay, give us your quote. We got Philippians 2 verse 5. Make your own attitude that of Christ. Make your own attitude yes. that of Christ. Well, I hope. What that, would Jesus do? Yeah, well, I hope that my attitude was okay today. Ed, <laughs> give me one of your quotes. Um, uh, let's see. It is, you don't have to seek revenge. Rotten fruit will always fall by itself. A good tree can't produce bad fruit neither can it a bad tree produce good fruit every tree that doesn't produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire so you recognize and buy their fruit so that was a quote for scripture quote right? for scripture yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah double well it makes me feel ordinary oh i don't know if i should still do mine but yeah I'll why try. not give it a go okay we repent enough to be forgiven but do we surrender enough to be changed Oof. We repent enough to be forgiven, but do we surrender enough to mm. be changed? And on that note, my friends, we bid you farewell. Don't forget this Sunday, Josiah is sharing the word of the 8 and 9.30, and Danny is sharing at night, and I will be here. Yes. I will be here this Sunday with Sandra, so don't say you're not coming because I'm not here. <laughs> I will be here with Sandra. I'll be at the 8, I'll be at the 9.30, I'll be at the prayer at 4.30, yeah. I'll be here at 5. Yes. I'll be here, so be here or be square. Yes. God bless you. Look forward to seeing you. See ya.